Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today we'll be looking at some CTF or Capture the Flag gameplay on Ragnarok, the remake of Halo 3's map Valhalla. Now, I would like to pause here at the very beginning here and run through a few of the strategies, but first off I'd like to say that this is probably my best game on Ragnarok to date. Uh, probably one of my best games in Halo 4, period. One of my YouTubers commented that he'd like some gameplay of Capture the Flag and Ragnarok, and this is 5v5 to Capture the Flag. And I was very pleased to be able to bring this to you guys. So let's run through the strategy of what you'll be seeing in this game. All right? Now, first off, how in the world do you get the enemy's flag out of their base? All right? And at what, where do you go when you grab it? Well, what you're going to want to do is when you actually get to the enemy base, which we'll get to in a minute, you want to grab the flag and immediately toss it out the front lift. You will die doing so, and you'll see my teammate Lego Lad courageously run in and grab the flag multiple times, pulling the flag out of the enemy's base to the middle. If you have control of the middle area, the Pelican, top center, and machine gun turret, if you have control of this center area, dropping down and grabbing the flag you just pulled out of their front lift over here should be quite simple. You should be able to grab that, pull it up over the top, and drop it onto your side. And from there, it's a straight shot to your base as long as you hold top middle and keep the enemy from crossing the middle area of the map. Now, keep in mind, we are against some very good enemy players, three which are several thousand positive. Four of them are SR-130, okay? One guy goes 33 and 11 on the enemy team. 33 kills, 11 deaths. So this is not an easy game. The strategy you're going to see off the start here is to grab the ghost, lift out of top center, and make sure to get to the center of the map to grab the Spartan laser, which I'm going to zoom forward a little bit so you can actually see it lags out a little bit, and there's the Spartan laser. Okay, Controlling the top center with Spartan laser is absolutely crucial in capture the flag because the fastest way to, of course, get your flag from base to base is with vehicles. All right, And you'll be seeing a lot of that. But a lot of people don't seem to know their opening rush. Know your opening rush strategy. I'm going to jump top middle, my teammate's going to grab sniper, and we're going to make sure to get control of this Spartan laser as quickly as possible. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, how to get over to the enemy base. The Lego lad on my team does an amazing job of doing this. He sneaks around the very sides of the map. And what's funny is that the enemy team gets so concerned with trying to push into the middle that they forget and end up not leaving anybody in their base to defend. Okay, or at least no one near their base whatsoever. And this is a mistake. The way that you're going to lose Ragnarok is not having anyone in your base whatsoever for an extended period of time. Okay, Because an enemy player like us, we're going to drive a mongoose along the very sides of the map, right here, along the very, very edges of the map, drive it all the way around. And if you go unnoticed, you can make it to the back of the enemy's base, get out, grab the flag, and throw it into the lift immediately run to the lift. You're going to die immediately by doing so, but that's a general strategy. A lot of people just don't seem to understand that. It's key that you get that in this game. Sorry for that long-winded explanation. Let's get to the gameplay now. Now off the spawn here, you see me spawning with the plasma pistol because I thought I was going to get a vehicle, and turns out I do. I enabled to get the ghost here. And I splatter the guy, making sure that he cannot get the Spartan laser. Interesting to pause here and note that my shields are not affected by the bubble shields I'm in because I'm in a vehicle. Um, it's interesting how the bubble shields do not affect your shields when you're in a vehicle. I think that's frankly a, a, a coding glitch on the part of the creators because they should. Now I hear an enemy player brings the ghost all the way to our base to grab our mantis and I get destroyed giving my teammate, distracting him, and giving my teammate time to hijack him. This is more a fault on our part. This actually happens two or three times throughout the game, because the Mantis um, is not as critical to get the Mantis as it is to control the Spartan laser. Okay, And this is something that a lot of people may be very conflicted about. It is far more important that you have a Spartan laser than it is that you have a Mantis. What you're going to be doing with the Mantis is staying on your side generally, on your side of the hill, but as soon as you see activity with the flag, you're going to move in on that flag. Whether your flag was pulled out or whether their flag was pulled out, 
you're going to move in on that flag and provide cover fire for your teammates to return your flag or capture their flag. That's what the Mantis is. It's literally a walking shield or um, a watching walking bullet sponge to distract the team and take enemy fire away from your teammates who are holding the flag. Here's an excellent use of the thruster pack as I'm able to get away. Notice our teamwork here. As I thruster pack backwards and I'm going to switch to my teammate who jet packs up into the air, switching to his battle rifle to make this guy one shot as he comes around the corner. That's Soapy. He's doing an excellent job of controlling top middle, enabling me to get this kill and stay alive. Calling out with your teammates is critical in this part. I see an enemy player who snuck around the back of our base past us to grab this flag. But as you can see, our teammates have done the exact same thing. And we're lifting out. The problem that we find ourselves in right here, putting some really good shots into this guy, is that the enemy team still has their mantis, and as you can see, I try to go for the flag and get immediately punished for that. We don't have a mantis at this point, and we do not have a Spartan laser. So, as you can see at the beginning of this game, it gets, it's really dicey for us in this scenario. SMSGMJ, who just ran around on the Warthog, you might not understand why he did that. He's trying to go and reset the enemy flag. As you can see, there's only 9 seconds, um, 7 seconds, 6 seconds on the enemy flag, so there's no way I'm going to be able to get to it in time, especially without dying. Instead, I crouch and end up taking this guy completely off guard. I call him out to my teammates as I do not end up getting that kill. So we've successfully lifted their flag out, and they've lifted out our flag. And it's been pretty early on in the game. I'm going to make a fairly uh, gutsy maneuver and go for the Spartan laser. As you can tell, the enemy players are good. He pursues that one shot, snipes me once in the body, and cleans me up with a saw. The enemy players are very competent in this game. However, my team is competent as well as you will see. This is the one of the closest calls we had in the game. The enemy team has a full Warthog going for our flag. My teammate ends up getting the assist, killing the flag carrier. Guys, when they're trying to get your flag, always kill the guy who is holding the flag. Never shoot the gunner or the driver of the vehicle. Always shoot the guy who is holding the flag. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get this kill. The guy did a really good job of getting in our Mantis. And as you'll see, the Mantis just gets destroyed. So you're like, okay, that was dumb of the enemy player. Why did he Why did he get in our Mantis? That's actually an incredibly smart maneuver. Because as you can see, their Mantis is, is again, up top middle. And we are down a Mantis. A terrible position for us to be in. Look where the enemy flag is. It's top middle again. We pulled it there. But the Mantis is doing exactly as he's supposed to do, guarding that flag, acting as a bullet sponge, waiting for it to count down and reset. It has only 16 seconds on it. It's highly doubtful we're going to take out a Mantis in 16 seconds. As you can see, my teammate immediately gets eliminated as he goes for the enemy flag. Get a comeback kill. Every single one, me and my teammates, get a comeback kill at some point during this game. Just letting you know, in flag, that is going to happen if you go after the flag. This is a great example of baiting myself. Look how I don't initiate contact with this player again after getting one shot. But as soon as a few seconds go by, he loses interest, and I end up killing the same guy who almost killed me. I'm basically baiting myself, um, using my teammates to distract him until he's changes his position and then I can clean him up there because he's not looking at me anymore. People have very little patience in Halo. So if you wait long enough, they're going to lose interest very quickly. It's kind of ironic. Here, staying back, making sure not to die here. I'm actually waiting for the Spartan laser to spawn, using the thruster pack to eliminate any angles they might have on my body. Soap ends up being killed here. I see the Spartan laser spawn, but I'm unsure of what to do. I need to make sure my shields regenerate. And this is a really unfortunate circumstance as the Mantis to my left blows up and kills me. Uh, that was not my teammate's fault. He didn't know, and I had no shield. If I had had shields, I would have survived that blast. So, as you can see, through the first half of this game, we're really fi fighting the enemy team. And this is the main reason why I uploaded this, is because this is really good good Halo right here, to be honest. Uh, we pulled their flag out again. I'm going to rush and reset the timer, even though I know I'm not going to survive for very long. I reset the timer, 
and my teammate is able to pick it up and carry a few more feet. As you can see, my teammate there trying to hold off the enemy players so we can grab their flag and move it. Now, the enemy flag is at the top of the base, and they just lifted their our flag out. So my teammate, um, girl, and I, by the way, I want to say this. The, the person, Proxy, who, now, who currently has the highest score on our team, is in fact a girl. Which I found it very ironic that we did in the, all of this with a, a legitimate girl teammate. Um, shout out to any of the female players out there who watch my channel or who uh, play gaming in general. You guys are awesome. Guys are awesome. Ironic. <laughs> I still say guys, even though it's actually girl. Anyway, so I'm trying to reset my flag here. Um, I unfortunately get plasma pistoled by this guy. My teammate does an excellent job of trying to protect me. And here's a really good smart maneuver on my part. Getting out of the mantis and exploding my mantis. Why did I do this really early? Because look. Look at the shields on my mantis. They're regenerating. So I want to get out of my mantis and throw grenades at it so the enemy players can't use it. I am in no position to die there. Dying there would do nothing for my team. I need to protect this flag and make sure it resets. Dying would mean I'd have to run all the way back from my base. That wouldn't be helpful at all. Very smart maneuver on my part right there. I see a guy top middle. Thankfully the flag isn't close enough to top middle that they can just jump down on top of the flag and grab it. That's really aggravating when your flag is directly under top middle and they can just jump off and grab it and reset the timer. It's really aggravating when that occurs. Flag reset. So I get the flag defense medal for defending our flag. I end up calling this player out and get absolutely destroyed by the machine gun turret. Good job on that guy for being accurate there. As you can see, three of my teammates have now died here. So I know that the enemy team was using some sort of binary rifle from machine gun turret. And turns out that's exactly what they're doing. I see this guy. And so you notice, notice where I'm going right now. Because I know that my teammates died here, and that guy had the binary rifle, I'm going to take a safe route. I'm going to go right here, okay, underneath here, so that the enemy player can't see me. Again, just reacting to the things I've seen and the callouts I'm getting. I got killed by binary rifle. Okay, well, I need to be more careful. Putting long-range shots in this guy with the battle rifle, I thrust her pack and immediately get behind this cover. A noob player would not have thrust her pack would not have thought the battle rifle could shot, shoot, shoot that far, which it can, and they would immediately have gone for the flag instead of getting behind cover. Okay, That's how I was able to survive this situation. Again, he's trying to jump off top middle to reset the flag. I'm still a little unsure if that binary rifle guy is over here. I'm a little unsure if he's still there. We push up top middle really, really trying to suppress the enemy to allow that 11 seconds or 10 seconds on our flag to reset. The enemy sniper is doing a really good job of picking off us. Now I want to pause here and say that the enemy sniper gets 17 sniper kills. Again, 33 kills, 11 deaths. All right. To my knowledge, he only kills me once during out this entire game. So the routes I'm taking, the way in which I'm playing the game is very defensive but offensive at the same time. One of the, Again, one of the main reasons I uploaded this film. Very good blend of gameplay. The only thing you're not seeing in this gameplay is me going for the flag when it's in their base. Because my teammate Legolad is doing an excellent job of pulling that flag out. And he does go negative by 4. Okay, He gets 12 kills, 16 deaths. All right? But he's going for the enemy flag. So that's a key role. You may go negative when going for the enemy's flag and pulling it out of their base, but he pulls it, according to him, at least five times out of the enemy base. Amazing job here. Done by Legolad in, in general. He's probably died many times. Now I want to point out here that on my HUD, on the very, very right-hand side of my HUD, I can tell that this binary rifle has come up. Okay, So this binary rifle, I'm just, to my viewers, don't, don't get confused. Our team has that. Holding Pelican is a great scouting position. I can tell anyone who's top middle, and I can call out them to my teammates. Right here, I'm able to give some really good call outs to um, uh, my female teammate right over there as the saw guy comes over there. 
again, two of my teammates died, so I know I need to come back to my base. I saw the red X's, and sure enough, I believe an enemy player grabs their flag, yeah, there he goes, and he goes out the base. As long as you're putting shots into them, and this is an excellent job of the Mantis' part, pushing up as soon as his teammate grabbed the flag to try to cover him. Unfortunately, he's so his Mantis is so on fire that it's really funny. Notice how I'm using this cover, constantly using this color, ducking behind so he doesn't have a clear shot on me. Even an enemy sniper on machine gun turret. Which, oh, by the way, the guy who's 33 kills is doubling up. A sniper rifle and a binary. Notice how he doesn't kill me here. Because I'm behind cover. I'm using the cover. Jump from cover to cover, being very, very strategic about my locationing. Okay? I am immediately rushing for the, snipe, the Spartan laser because we have not consistently had that through most of the game. Using cover again to my advantage. The enemy te team ends up grabbing our Mantis, which is something right here, I can just tell you, having the Spartan laser is so much more important than actually having the Mantis. Because if your teammates are shooting at the Mantis, one shot of the Spartan laser will take it down if it's this, if the Mantis' shields are already dead. Here's another excellently, just really good smart play on my part. Taking out the enemy vehicle even though they're not in it, so that they can't rush. Rushing very often times will give you that flag pull. And flag pulls on Ragnarok have to be addressed immediately. You cannot let someone pull the flag out of your base, because as soon as they pull it out, if they get top middle, it's over. Okay, with a good team on the enemy team, it's over. Because they can control top middle and suppress us before we can get over and return the flag. It's almost impossible because they can lift over again and again and again to top middle. And there's a never-ending stream of them. The lifts on Ragnarok make for extremely interesting capture the flag gameplay. I think... The main th reason I see games being so slow on Ragnarok is because you never ha see a teammates actually trying to pull the flag out the front. Once you pull the flag out the front, everything is about control from there. Excellent use of the thruster pack here as I get a double kill, a delayed double kill, uh, because of the Warthog exploding and killing an enemy player, and then the triple kill with the DMR. A lot of teammates would just push up here and it fully exposed themselves. You can't do that with an enemy sniper. That's why I, I may be playing very passively, staying behind cover a lot. And I never peek my head up too much above top middle. Laser this guy. I put some good shots into him and switch, switch my focus to the secondary player as I put really good shots into him, getting the assist and end up cleaning up that second guy I noticed. Very good work on my part, switching players. You're going to see me get sniped here in the body, but I end up going ahead and going for the flagpole, trying to suppress the enemy players. I see that my teammate is dead, get sniped in the body, grab the flag, push to top middle as quickly as I can. I'm going to end up getting killed, but look how far I got the flag. All my team has to do is grab it and jump off. Now, the Spartan laser did come up, but um, my teammate grabs that, and you can see their mantis pushing in the distance. Their mantis is going to breach top middle a little too late as we pull the flag all the way back to our base. You're going to see this mantis come over and try to immediately take out my teammates, but it's too late as we have the flag and we flag all the way back to our base. Three minutes and 40 seconds left in the game, I get an incinerate cannon as the uh, enemy player heroically tries to charge our base and prevent that guy. Again, they're good. They're trying to prevent us from, from capping the flag even though we're already back in our base. That's the mark of a good enemy team right there. The Mantis presses in, trying to give his teammates an advantage. I put a billion shots in this, and this is the first This is the first time I've been sniped by the enemy sniper. Um, ironically, I end up killing the enemy sniper a total of four times. I was the guy who killed him the most during that game. I get sniped by him the least, but I kill him the most. Kind of interesting. I get one-shotted here, so... I know there's two enemy players in the bottom of our base. You guys may not be able to tell that in the video, but there's two guys in the bottom of our base. Okay? Now, what I want you to see here is what I called out to my teammate who's behind me. I said, I'm going to take the guy on the right, you take the guy on the left, and that's exactly what we're going to do. As you watch my radar, I almost get assassinated, but my teammate is able to clean up the guy behind me very well, and we end up killing both of those players with no casualties on our part. Very, very good teamwork there. Take control of the situation. Be a leader. 
let's say, let's do this. Oftentimes, trying something out is better than doing nothing at all. I'm gonna saw this guy's face off. Surprising people with a saw is probably one of the most satisfying things in the universe. I see our, our sniper is up at our base on my HUD. I see that, so I call it out. I, I see my teammate get killed here, so I'm peeking out, making sure that there's no sniper who took him out. Putting some shots top middle. Now, why did that guy charge down? Well, look, they got our flag all the way over here. So I'm going to charge up, put some excellent shots into some guys who are one shot. The overkill come, came only because those two guys were one shot. My teammates did an excellent job of uh, suppressing them and getting their shields weak. We now have two flag caps, which <laughs> I probably didn't mention because I was so caught up in the commentating the gameplay. This guy ends up hijacking my teammate. I try to put some good shots in him, but he plants the grenade. Doing some excellent defensive work with my team here. Again, so pushing up. You see him die there. I stay alive by thruster packing behind this rock. Again, thruster packing. My teammate is sticky deading. Okay, my teammate just sticky deaded the flag. An excellent idea. If you have the sticky debt and it's captured the flag, the sticky debt is like two times as useful and capture the flag as you can sticky debt the flag. Watch that radar on the side of the sticky debt and wait till someone comes and capture the flag and do it. You can see my third triple kill here. The BR is excellent at cleaning up people who are already one shot. Miss a very hasty Spartan laser, but I immediately see the enemy Mantis. This is a very, very crucial play here. This is where we really, really work well as a team. I call, hey, I have a Spartan laser. I'm gonna try to get that Mantis. So we're gonna be very, very defensive in our strategy here. And with two Spartan laser shots, I eventually end up taking out their Mantis. Now you may be wondering, why did the Mantis stay behind cover? Well, because they're about to cap a flag and it's one minute in the game. They have to get this flag. They have to. So the Mantis is of course pushing up. I end up taking out the Mantis here, trying to put some long range shots on everyone, watching my radar, responding to callouts. End up destroying that guy. Not exactly sure how that Spartan laser didn't blow up the vehicle, but oh well. My teammate, this is an incredible job. I mean, I'm imagining this is Legolad here on the enemy team. This has to be Legolad. Yeah. Oh, okay, Legolad is defending the flag. But anyway, Pruxy, the, the female on our team, going behind enemy lines while they're distracted, while everyone's going to be rushing to the center of the map. She goes behind enemy lines, grabs the flag, and pulls it out. What I want you to notice here is as she dies, she throws the flag. Notice how she jumps in midair, and it pushes the flag even farther. You always want to be jumping. As soon as you lift out the front of the base, jump. Because if you die while you're jumping, you're going to throw the flag that much further. Okay, excellent job on her part. Using the thruster pack again. Put some excellent shots into the guy. Notice how this guy has no clue. He's only looking at the flag, and we're using that to our advantage. Eight more seconds. That guy got up there with the jet pack. I get a long-range savior medal for the running riot as we reset the flag. They pulled our flag all the way to the center, and we end up resetting it. I make some ver a very poor maneuver. I shouldn't have gone after this guy. I shouldn't have given up my top middle position here as I end up getting killed. This was actually my last game of the night. And as you can see, my teammate Rook puts in the flag right there. Amazing game. Um, I end up getting a 700 score, which in Capture the Flag is ridiculous because most of the time you'd see the rookie getting two flag caps. A flag cap is 100 points towards your score. So getting 700 score in a Capture the Flag game, 14 assists, 12 deaths, is pretty good. I'd like to uh, honorable mentions go to Soap, my teammate, 29 kills and 21 deaths, doing a very good job of assisting with 23 assists top middle. Proxy, the female on our team, doing an excellent job of controlling and with that clutch flag cap at the very, uh, or clutch flag grab, should I say, at the very end of the game. And Lego Lad constantly pulling the enemy team's flag. Um, guys, I hope that helped you understand how to play Ragnarok a little bit better, capture the flag, and uh, just subscribe and like for more Halo content in the future. And I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Thanks, guys. Thank you.